Hello and welcome to this demonstration of uh, ITS using the ARPA network. First, let's start out up the emulators. Uh, let's load ITS. And first of all, this is good to know later. Let's see the host number. Uh, that's octal and decimal. So this is good to know for uh, connecting to ITS later, the ITS host number. And there we see a message, imp interface reset message. That means the imp is alive and uh, wants to reset the, the interface. So I'm going to log in on the system console. And here's a little picture of the network as it is today. We have an imp, which is the interface message processor. Uh, every imp has a number. This one has 76 in octal, and which is 62 in decimal. And uh, the imp has four host ports, one, zero, one, two, and three. So ITS is connected to port one, and we also have a local NCP running on port zero. Um, NCP, by the way, it can mean both network control protocol and network control program, depending on whether it's the protocol or the software running on an ARPANET host. Uh, so we can see the host number for ITS is 176. And that's by virtue of being connected to IMP 76 uh, host port 1. And the other host is the uh, NCP running on my laptop, which is connected to host port 0 on IMP 76. ITS will uh, usually use the octal numbers, but everyone else will usually use the decimal numbers. So it's good to take note of both. So first of all, we're going to do something trivial, which is uh, logging into ITS itself, from itself. So I'm starting the old user telnet program, and I'm connecting to 176. I'm logging in again. And this time I'm Lars zero because if we finger, we can see Lars, that's me. I'm already ready logged in and running user telnet from the system console. And the new user Lars zero is running finger and is logged in from net site 101062. Um, this version of ITS is already converted to use TCP IP, but still has support for NCP. But we can see that um, ITS has apparently translated the host number to an IP number. So 10 means the ARPA network, 1 is the host number, and 62 is the IMP number. So that makes sense. So let's log out of here. And now we're going to log in from somewhere else. So here we have some applications. And we also have this file, ncp 6 So this is a socket file. This is how the applications uh, talk to the NCP running on my laptop. They need to know where it is, so we'll you export an uh, environment var variable. And now we can do some things. We have a little ping application, so we can ping uh, ITS. So here we use a decimal number, and we can see it's, it's, it's responding. We also have finger. 
So you can see me logged in on the console. And to make it more interesting, we can log in using Telnet. So we can see here on the system console, some things are happening. Someone is logging, logging in. Um, we can run finger. We see two users again. This time the network site is 100062. So this is host zero on six, AIMP 62. We can run peak to see what's going on in this system. Um, you can see both Lars and Lars Zero are running stuff here. And there's an A command to see network connections. So you can see there is one connection at this point. And next we can start an internet server on port, oh sorry, socket one. and go back to the console, run UT, use the telnet again. And this time we connect to 76. So it says, welcome to Unix. And here we have our files again. So that works too. And uh, next thing, uh, we don't actually have to write new applications for everything if there's just one TCP connection involved. In that case, we can just gateway the connection straight over to the ARPANET. So we want to take one TCP port, say 1095, and have that routed directly to ARPANET, host 126, port 95. And now, we can run, run soup doop. We type in our local laptop host and the port number we said. And now we are logged in using soup doop. Um, once again, finger shows the same uh, IP number as we uh, had when we used Telnet, because now we're gatewaying TCP connection to uh, onto the ARPANET. We can run peak again. We see this time we are using a display protocol as opposed to the uh, printing terminal that Telnet gave us. So that's nice. And finally, I want to show that we also can connect using ChaosNet at the same time. So minus C for ChaosNet. And this time when we run finger, we see this chaos here. And also in the network connection, we see that it's noted as ChaosNet. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.